It's a great pleasure to be here today uh, to get a chance to talk to you about Space Station and, and what we've done. It's been 10 years, which is amazing. The hardware's been on orbit for that amount of time. The hardware's been on orbit for 10 years, but many of the work began as many as 25 years ago, which is just a phenomenal accomplishment. Um, again, you saw the, the picture to, that started out with we were flying around Space Station to give you an idea of how big it is. Um, it's sitting there next to a 747 uh, uh, aircraft that's about also the size of an A380, uh, same, about to roughly the same size. There's been 74 launches to the space station uh, since 1998. Uh, we've had 158 people from 14 countries have visited the ISS, and that's a pretty amazing number. Uh, more simple things, 18,000 meals have been served on board Space Station. So, so think about that uh, as a more kind of trivial thing, but it shows that we're actually have moved from, from living on the planet to actually living in space. And, and again, the Space Station team is about 100,000 folks from, from 16 countries. Again, uh, the international partners, I think you know them all well, and we'll hear them here during the symposium, the Canadian Space Agency, the European Space Agency, uh, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, and NASA, and then also the Russian Space Agency. Again, I like this chart. This really shows the global reach of Space Station. Uh, you know, even though we're only 240 or so miles above the surface of the Earth, if you look at all the control centers that are now active and, and work with Space Station every day, you can see them here on the map. You can see the, the Canadian uh, Space Agency up in uh, St. Hubert, uh, Canada. You can see a mission control in Houston, the payload control center in Alabama. Uh, moving down to the Kennedy Space Center where the shuttle launches, uh, down to uh, Kourou where the Ariane launched with ATV th this year. Uh, you can then go over to uh, the Columbus Control Center, to the ATV Control Center, to the Japanese Control Center, uh, and then down to the Japanese launch site uh, in Tanegashima, Japan. So it's a, it's a pretty amazing international community that works together. It turns out each day we send about 1,300 commands to the space station. And of those commands, more importantly now, about 600 of those 1,300 commands originate from foreign uh, countries or from other international partners. So the space station really is be starting to become international. It's no longer just a, a NASA endeavor, not just a U.S. endeavor. It's really the world community is, is operating and utilizing station with the new Kibo module and the Columbus module on orbit. Again, in terms of spacewalks, if you go back in the NASA program, we started uh, the Gemini program with nine spacewalks. Uh, we've moved on to Apollo uh, Skylab with 36. Today we've had about 104 spacewalks, uh, assembling space station as, as we sit today. And in the remaining uh, couple years, two years or so, we plan to have about uh, 50 or so more EVAs, uh, roughly about uh, four or five EVAs per space shuttle flight uh, and a couple stage EVAs to complete uh, the space station. If you take a kind of a snapshot, uh, if you thumb through your, your personal photos of what Space Station looked like, they start in the upper left-hand corner and they move all the way down to the image of Space Station today. So it's a pretty phenomenal time over those uh, 10 years from 1998 to today. The physical configuration has changed fairly dramatically. And now really what, what we need to keep doing is we need to focus on the real reasons for Space Station. It was good to put it together. It was a tremendous engineering achievement, a tremendous international accomplishment to to assemble it, but now we need to start really utilizing Space Station and we need to, to use the research uh, activities that are there. The Space Station is a tremendous platform for Space Station research. Um, there's uh, lots of capabilities on the outside in the exposed areas out on the Columbus module that can be used for uh, uh, remote experiments. Out on the uh, Russian segment, they fly many experiments on the outside, bio-risk, et cetera, on the outside they attach them. Uh, they've uh, flown a, a Matryoshka experiment, a radiation experiment on the outside of Space Station. Uh, you see here we have a MISI container, which is materials experiments that we can fly on Space Station. So I think one of the unique things about Space Station is the external uh, venue where we can do things on the outside. Again, some more uh, experiments on the U.S. side. We're, we're focused uh, primarily towards uh, the human side, uh, looking as we move to longer durations in space, as we move to the moon and move to Mars, we need to understand how the human uh, progresses in space. So we're doing a lot with that. We're looking at exercise uh, protocols to, to keep the human machine healthy. Uh, we're looking at uh, radiation effects. Uh, we're looking at uh, 
uh, crew interactions and, and teaming of crews as they're going to have to spend more and more time in space. So the space station proves to be a very good research facility to learn how to operate in space. Probably the most exciting thing this year, or one of the most exciting things, is the Columbus module uh, arrived in February of 2008 on board Space Station. Um, it was a great accomplishment to see it there. I've had the privilege of seeing it in Bremen, uh, Germany, when it was being put together. I got to stand there with the technicians and the folks that actually had, had put it together and assembled it. And, and when I got to see it get attached on orbit, uh, my thoughts went not to the hardware, but went to the folks that I saw in Bremen, the, the ADS folks, the Astrium folks that put this hardware together, how much of their life they've dedicated to actually see this piece of hardware get on orbit. And now we're going to go figure out a way to go utilize that effectively. I know there's quite a bit of experiments getting done, and there's some ex external things out there, some solar and some other experiments that are being operated on Columbus. Again, uh, Dexter arrived in March of 2008. That's uh, the Canadian uh, robot that sits on the end of the uh, space station RMS. I think this is, again, part of our future. We're going to have to learn how to do robotic operations in space. You saw the chart earlier on how many spacewalks we, we, did, we have done on space station. We need to figure out a way that we can use the, the Dexter robot to do more routine maintenance. All our orbital replacement units, all our uh, software packages, all our hardware packages on the outside of Space Station are compatible with this robot. We need to start utilizing this robot and, and actively learn what it's like to use a robot in space and, and uh, be effective in, in maintaining a space, uh, space station such as the one we've built. Uh, Kibo left Japan in May of 2003, and, and I like this chart. Uh, this is it going down to the port in Yokohama. It's being loaded into a container ship for uh, being shipped across the, uh, the ocean to the, the United States. Um, I tried really hard during its ocean journey. It took about a month for it to arrive in, uh, in Florida to get the space station crew to take a picture of the ship. So I had the, the Japanese space agency give me daily ship coordinates of where the ship was as it was transiting the, the ocean. And I kept trying to find a, a correlation between where the crew was with Space Station, where the sun was, and where the ship was, and I never made it for 30 days, except the Japanese kept asking me, now, why are you so interested in where our ship is? And, and so, again, that was part of the trust of Space Station, is they knew that I had some great secret motive, why I was tracking their ship as it was going across the ocean, but it was really just to get the crew to take a picture of it, which I never got to have done. But, but maybe someday we'll, we'll get that. But I also like this picture because it shows the, the uniqueness of the, of the Space Station enterprise. Um, the Columbus module arrived in, a, in, a, in an aircraft uh, from, from, from Bremen, and the Japanese uh, shipped their module in, in a container ship. And, and so it's, each partner approaches the same technical, physical problems or challenges in their own unique way. And this is a, another really exciting picture seeing Kibo actually on orbit uh, again in 2008. I like this picture. It has a Soyuz and the shuttle, our primary transportation systems. Uh, in the future, we're going to see the shuttle retire here in 2010, and then the Soyuz will be our primary crew transportation, and, and I think that's a, the next phase that we're moving into. And then hopefully on the U.S., we're going to bring some commercial crew, crew and cargo transport in to, to start utilizing station. So I think that's another uh, real benefit of space station. It can be a destination. It can be a market. It can be a reason for commercial companies to start providing transportation to space. And that's another, I think, kind of maybe unthought of thing that, that station is proving to be potentially useful for that I'm not sure that we thought about when we envisioned it 25 years ago. You know, one of the Apollo astronauts uh, was quoted as saying when he was on the moon that we had to go all the way to the moon to learn about the Earth. And I think in the same way, we may be doing the same thing with space station. We're still in low Earth orbit, but we're going to use space station to learn better how systems work. We're learning how biology works better or works differently. And again, I think if I look forward, Space Station has been uh, great for the past uh, 10 years, but the real future is in front of us. It's now up to us to, to figure out how to craft that next generation, so maybe 10 years when the IAF has another conference and we look back to 20 years of Space Station being on orbit, we can talk about 10 years of, of Space Station operations and research. So again, uh, I want to welcome you to the symposium, uh, spend some time uh, talking to your colleagues, uh, interacting with the panels, asking inquisitive questions, and, uh, and have a good time here at the symposium. And I want to thank the IAF, IAF for having me here and, and talking. Thank you.